talk about big tech censorship and what to do about it. Big tech censorship is the big tech companies that have acquired critical mass and achieved network effect using ideologies and agendas, applying censorship to control public perception, mold and shape public opinion. These companies acquired critical mass through freedom of speech and being very liberal in what they allowed on their platform, catering towards the user, putting the user first. After acquiring critical mass and becoming established as de facto, they have applied censorship as community guidelines to remove content, even ex post facto removing accounts that didn't violate terms and conditions in the past, but when the new terms and conditions are applied, as they're always changing, the violation occurs from something in the past and that user either has to delete their content or is suspended for their content or is banned from the platform for something they said in the past. I know because it has happened to me. Facebook posts that I had posted more than a year prior triggered a community standards violation and I was suspended for 30 days. The content was removed and it was so long ago that I could not recall what it was. As much as I could try to figure out what I had posted more than a year ago at that time, couldn't recall it. So I was punished for something I didn't know what it was and it was deleted retroactively. I was punished. That's ex post facto. The problem applies to the companies that have sort of become like a monopoly. Uh, I think it's more of a problem in this case because it's almost a standard. You know, any company that's you know, trying to dab, do business is going to have to have a Facebook, uh, Twitter, or Instagram. And many companies use social media for feedback so their customers can mention them or inquire, ask a question, file a complaint, deal with customer service through Twitter and Facebook. Most politicians use F Facebook and Twitter. And when politicians use Facebook and Twitter, their feeds are considered to be public forums, as was ruled by the Supreme Court regarding Donald Trump's feed when uh, he was challenged for blocking people and he was not allowed to block people on his feed. Interestingly, that same individual was himself blocked and all of his content was deleted. So the Supreme Court protected public forum was deleted by Twitter, a private entity, thereby violating the rights of apparently everyone who's trying to access that feed. It's, it seems to be interesting to me. I don't really understand how that works, but it did happen. Donald Trump was deleted. Yes, and I realize that Donald Trump is a, a hot button for many people. I don't care about that. I'm just talking about the facts that happened and how they apply to the rule of law, the principle that is just should be applied fairly and equally to all. So what to do about it? Well, first I want to define what big tech censorship is. I would define, I'll define it as big tech as anything with a certain number of users. And I'll leave that open, leave that open. I haven't specified the number of users, so it's big. It has a certain number of users. It's uh, publicly accessible. Anybody can go there and sign up and create an account, uh, so long as there aren't government restrictions on that, uh, on that web application, such as within China. But anybody can go there, it's publicly accessible, right? We don't have such restrictions here in the United States. It's publicly accessible and it's general purpose, which means you can talk about trees, violins, uh, sanitation, anything, pretty much anything you want to talk about. It's pretty much general purpose. Anybody can go there and sign up and it's large, large scale general purpose is what big tech is. And the censorship is the removal of the content. And I would, uh, say that that is generally bad and should 
not be 